relevant. What you to really think about, are you betraying the best you uh, at all times? I mean, literally at all times. I like to joke in person, and I know I can't hear you laugh, but I, this guy up in the right-hand corner is not from San Diego because he would have flip-flops on. But anyway, a huge, another big pet peeve of mine is how we dress and, and present ourselves. And are you generating the most income? So this guy up here is not generating a lot of income when he's talking to his personal friends, even though they dress this way. He's not. I, I guarantee you he's not. Because what they want to see is you in a professional format, especially if they're referring you to their friends or even their boss. Think about that one. Anyway, everything we talk about here at Real Marketing and our 1,700 clients, 56 employees, the only thing we're concerned about is listings. We just want to get you more and more listings. There's a lot of reasons for that. And I'll give you the math on it. 67% of sellers say they were going to buy another house within a 10-mile radius of where they sold. So, And if you list my house and you do a good job, you're certainly going to take me out to buy my next house. If you do the math on that, 67% of all buyers were sellers. What is that combined math? It's 83%. So 83% of all activity is really started is either a listing or started as a listing. So you kind of get the idea. So if 83% of the business is in and around listings, I don't want to talk about buyers at all. And, and there's plenty of companies out there trying to sell you a whole lot of, you know what, some of you paid for it and, and most of you have lost out on that one. But anyway, remember, it's always about listings. I have Stephanie Younger in Los Angeles. She did $250 million in sales last year. And I can't even, every time I look at her listings, it's dozens and dozens of listings that she has. And in today's market, that's phenomenal because we all know they're selling really quick. So here's a question for you. Where do listings come from? It is a really interesting question. A lot of you, are, it'll be just referrals, but your referral base is kind of capped. Let's look at, look at it this way. If you have 100 friends and your turnover rate in your area is 7% or seven of your 100 friends are going to move every year. Well, guess what? Seven is your cap. So there's these other gimmicks that are out there uh, which ours is not, um, always seem to have a ceiling. I call it a glass ceiling. And so, but where do listings come from? I have a better question. Where do they not come from? Don't turn your screen off now. Wait until I get through this. The internet. They absolutely do not come from the internet. Remember, 78% of homeowners will deal with a neighborhood expert. That is not portrayed on the internet. You can't reach all the neighbors, every single neighborhood this way. And many of you have tried this for years. Um, I want to look at something here. Right. So 11 years ago, NAR, this is an NAR statistic. 11 years ago, 5% of sellers selected an agent from the internet. I said, all right, 5%. And that's, that's pretty low. And then we think about, I think it's like 12 years ago, the iPhone came out. So if we think about how much technology has improved over the last 11 years, 12 years, it's amazing. It's immense, right? The iPhone was just coming out. Think about what it'll do right now. Here's the statistic on where it is today, how it's moved. In 2019, it was still 5%. In 2020 and 21, it's still 5%. Nobody's been able to ever move this needle at all. And uh, people choose to work with people they know or the neighborhood expert. Pretty simple. Um, 20 years ago, I just want to see something here for a nap. Yeah, so 20 years ago... I, Literally, if we went back 20 years, almost every single neighborhood was dominated by an agent. And also, if you look at the top agents in the country, they typically work in one area. They specialize in a particular neighborhood or area. Um, and so how did this, this myth of the internet get, get into our psyche and our business plan? And if, this is a very true statement. 97% of homeowners start their search online. They're, they're gonna, what they're going to do is they're going to try and do their own CMA, and then they're going to try and find their next house or get an idea of what they could buy. But that's really, I mean, it's great. And you would think at 97% of people start there that you should be able to convert them. They haven't. Nobody's ever been able to figure out how to convert that online business. Um, I've had a, a hundred, if not more, Zillow clients that have just, anyway, talk to them, don't talk to me. I'm not going to say much more about it. We've also learned to block this message. I would, oh, I bet you a cup of coffee that every single one of us got up this morning, got a cup of coffee, and went into our emails and went click, 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 trash. 
right? Because we're trying to be efficient. And, and if we read every single garbage email we had, we have no business, right? So this is a really important thing to remember. Um, and I also want to clarify something. The internet's very important to your business. So I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying let's use it properly so that you can get the most out of it. Give it the value it's due and don't overvalue it. And that's what most of us have done is overvalue it. So the internet is about validation. And we're going to, like I just said, I, it's, a, it's a critical part of your business. It needs to be there. You need to be good at it. Um, and it's something that we can absolutely help you with. But the internet is about validation. So if I get something from you stating that you're the neighborhood expert and I go to your website and it's all about my neighborhood, guess what? I've just validated your thought process that I am the go-to agent and the neighborhood expert. So what is the objective of direct mail? It's pretty simple. Most of us have sent out a just listed or just sold postcard. And the objective is simple, right? I want someone who's thinking about selling or perhaps buying to call me. It's that, that, that simple. And that, that's, that's, that's really what that's all about. We're looking for more listings from people that we don't know. Our personal sphere, we have great, great strategies and programs for your personal sphere. But today we're going to talk about how do we grow your personal sphere and how do we grow your business outside and uh, above and beyond that seven that are actually going to sell next year? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's just look at those. And so there's a tremendous amount of myth and um, I'm going to call it bad behavior in the, in the direct mail business. And most people don't know it. So that's why we're doing this educational seminar. This is Greg Newman in downtown San Diego. Uh, he started with us in 2009. And you can see his production just steadily growing. This is what every business plan should look like. A steady growth, a program that works. He also generated almost $4 million in commissions back in 2018. Um, we'll need to update these slides, but nothing has changed. He is still been, he outsells the top four agents combined, single-handedly. Great, great agent. And this is that statistic of him outselling all of his other competitors. Just absolutely phenomenal. And by the way, earlier we said that um, listings equal lifestyle. And so Greg spent two, two months in Venice, Italy, in his three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath villa in Venice. You can't do that when you're working with just buyers. Um, so again, listings clearly dominate and, and showcase lifestyle. I think that's important. Just statistically, we printed over 84 million pieces of direct mail. Um, so we've learned a thing or two along the way. And in the last couple of years, our business has grown exponentially. Um, this year, we will mail almost a million pieces a month. We'll clearly hit 10 million pieces for the year. So again, something we've learned, we've made a lot of, we've, I always said we've made more mistakes than most people could afford to. But that's what's back early in our career. And we've, we've learned from that, hopefully. 